Hello everyone, I'm Don Pratt, host of a show here on Rogers TV where we give you a perspective of police in your community. Welcome to Policing York Region. Today we're, we're taking a little bit of a different spin. We're actually going outside of the box of, of YRP and we're, we're going to be talking about motor vehicle safety. And I just want to uh, flip to a quick video and then we'll be right back. IBC is a proud sponsor of the Accident Awareness Program. It's one of the many ways Insurance Bureau of Canada can reach consumers of all ages. I have uh, 38 years in policing, <laughs> uh, 8 years with Toronto and 30 out with uh, Durham Region. How many people in here feel that it's safe not to wear your seatbelt in the back seat of your car? In our hit and run squad and also collision reconstruction. Remember, when you get ejected, you're going the same direction as the vehicle, so there's a very good chance the vehicle is going to end up on top of you. We go to the schools all over Ontario discussing matters dealing with fatal motor vehicle collisions. When you're dealing with the students and that, there's things that they're not aware of, uh, little things, you know, like walking on the left side of the road, uh, being able to see the cars coming towards you, taking an earbud out of your ear, and uh, things of that nature. And, and when you're in a motor vehicle, you have a person who's a very young driver, and they need to know what can happen to them when they're in a motor vehicle, so I just give them the information on things that can happen and how fast they can happen. The Insurance Bureau of Canada came in uh, a few years ago to be involved with us and then now they've uh, now they've become a major partner with us. Uh, I think it's a really good fit. I guess the best way to describe it is sort of like an accordion has just like crunched the car together and then reading the description you realize how fast the person was going 141 kilometers in a 60 zone and the reason it happened because of texting and the person unfortunately passed away so not only is it tragic it's just more tragic because it's so preventable although the rules are a little boring sometimes they're in in place for a purpose and that's to keep us safe try not to be on your phones and be aware of your surroundings and just focus on one thing it'd be very hard not to have walked away with uh at least a little bit of um, heightened knowledge about uh, what it means to be aware and what it means to survive the day. If I reach one person, then that's great. That's a great day. Welcome back, everyone. And that's a great way to bring in this uh, the topic today. Um, I'm I'm sitting with the co-founders of a program called Accident Awareness. We have John Hines and Bob Annan. Thanks so much, gentlemen, for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to give a little bit of a history um, with our involvement to Accident Awareness, that was a, uh, an introduction that was made by the York Regional Police Traffic Unit. And um, our, for, for us, our own volunteers, um, we host many events throughout the year, and we've had the pleasure of partnering with you on one of them, which right. is the uh, the Georgina exactly. um, home show. Yeah. Yeah. And and I can tell you, uh, we, we'll get into it a, a little bit later. I can tell you that when we first introduced the idea of let's bring this vehicle in, that um, unfortunately it was a result of a tragic, I want to say accident. I, I always get corrected. A, tra a tragic collision. Um, it was a bit unnerving because we were we were going to deliver this message to to everybody in the in the um, you know that came in through the Georgian Ice Palace. But what a powerful message, right? Yeah. Um, so actually, we, we 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 can even just jump right to that. We can throw to a couple of pictures from the Georgian sure. Ice Palace. Sure. This is this is. This is beside our table, and right. do you, one of you want to talk about the, the history sure. of this particular vehicle? I'll take this one. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Well, this uh, this one here, this was a, a collision that happened up in Barrie several years ago. Well, maybe about four years ago, and uh, it was a 42-year-old woman. Uh, she's the mother of a 13-year-old boy, mm -hmm. and uh, she was um, turning out from I think it was a Harvey's mm -hmm. out onto the street. And right. what happened was that as she was turning out, there were two guys racing down the street, uh, street race. Uh, the one guy was driving a BMW, wow. and he ran into the left side of her, T-boned her, and um, um, or side impacted her, sure. and uh, knocked her over into her son's lap, where she died in her son's lap. Yeah, it was That's... a tough one. It, it, it has been a, a hard one, and when people look at it, they you know they. 
um, they do react to it. When people mm -hmm. need to see things like this, and mm -hmm. they got to understand what goes on out on the road, mm -hmm. like it's it's uh, not easy. And in policing, it's really it's a hard thing to do. Like you, we, we try to control the traffic, try to keep everything flowing, and nobody thinks anything can happen to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's uh, right, right there. Yeah. That's one of the most uh, yeah. one of the deadliest mistakes is and when we think that it can't happen to us. Right. Cause right. As you know, I mean, okay. So I want to get back into. Uh, I, I kind of jumped ahead there a little bit into just who you guys are, where you came from, and, and basically why are we here. So you, you both have a policing element to Right, and I'm still with the original place, 29 years done, uniform patrol okay. supervisor, and just seeing all this stuff on the road every day like all of us, all of us do. We, we mm -hmm. see people on the cell phones talking or texting while we're going to and from work, and Mm -hmm. You know, not people not wearing seatbelts or passing you because they're in a hurry on a yeah, rainy we, day. We see that on the screen. But, you know, one of the one of the clips that was embedded in there, that guy was being tossed around like a rag doll. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't a small guy. No, wearing a seatbelt. And that's and that's the effect. Yeah, that's like, exactly what happens. So try to get people to believe it. You know, like to understand it. This yeah. is this is how we actually started it back in '93. We we're looking at this stuff and like this is not rocket science. Yeah. This is just what happens. You don't wear your seatbelt. You're going 80 kilometers an hour and you stop. Everything in the vehicle, not strapped down, is going 80 kilometers an hour, including yeah. you. Uh, and yeah, people don't believe still it. Still going to yeah. take you. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to be at fault for the collision. Right, you can be just no. doing everything correct, going down the road, not having your seatbelt on, and somebody runs a stop sign or turns left in front of you or mm -hmm. something to that, yeah. and you end up into the collision, rolling mm -hmm. your car over. Well, if your seatbelt's not on, you're not staying in your seat. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to travel somewhere around inside mm -hmm. the car, or you're going to come out of the car. Wow, and and we do hear of that oh, yeah. and, all and the time. That, yeah. that that whole message about about seatbelt. I mean, I remember that as a kid. Right, the, you, you remember that as a kid that, you know, wear your seatbelt, wear your seatbelt, wear your seatbelt. Yeah. In today's in in today's day day and age, like you know, where where we have the social media channels, where we have, you know, different ways to learn and be educated, it's so hard to believe that it's actually still an issue. Every well, day, I think it's. I I honestly think it'll always be an issue. But all we can do is keep going out and trying to educate people and showing them videos. Uh, some of the videos we got, such as the guy going around the inside of the car and let people mm -hmm. see, hey, you know, this is this is what actually happens. This is not made up. No. You know, and so we'd like to make sure no. that, that people understand no. that. You know. Well, that's the first time, for myself, that's the first time I'd ever seen yeah. Yeah. Well, um, the police, Policemen for years, every time you go into your patrol car, mm -hmm. you take your, your big briefcase, most of us had a Pelican briefcase, mm -hmm. you put it in the passenger seat beside you when you're a solo car, and you seatbelt the, the, yes. the suitcase in, mm -hmm. or the briefcase in, because if something happened, Mm -hmm. the, suit the suitcases or the briefcase is not going to come and hit you mm -hmm. if you got rolled over or hit or, you know. Yeah, that, that was a conversation that was brought in uh, to us as well. Um, as a volunteer team, we, we quite often will we'll form a uh, seatbelt inspection yeah. clinic and That's we'll good. utilize some partners in the community mm -hmm. to do so. And at one of them, one of those partners was a retired OPP officer. And, um, you know, as much as he was, you know, like yourselves, because you have that experience, as much as he was tuned into, okay, let's make sure this child gets kept safe, he's saying, you know, you have an umbrella laying on the back seat in your, on your floor that should be in the trunk. And I'm like, what? He says, yeah, projectiles. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the stuff people put on the back windows of the cars. If yeah. you hit something suddenly and stop, whatever's on that back window ledge is going to come straight See? to the back of your head. We had uh, we were at one school. Uh, we were talking, and you know, we asked for any questions or whatever. And, and one teacher was, uh, you know, told us that her mother was driving down the 401 near Avenue Road. Vehicle went out of control. I think the front wheel broke or something mm -hmm. on it. The axle broke, and um, uh, there was a metal coffee cup. You know, the the yes. uh, yeah, the kind you carry in a car, mm -hmm. and so it went flying around the inside of the car at 100 kilometers an hour because whatever's going 100 and, and you know isn't tied down will continue going 100 and went around and uh, hit her in the face and shattered all the bones under her, her eye and then continued going around for a second time and that and hit wow. another person I think broke their nose so like uh, people have to understand this is the stuff that's going on and yeah. they should do whatever they can to make sure that you know that they 
Survive okay. the day and get Yeah, home. you don't really think of a coffee cup as being dangerous. No, but no, in, no. in the right environment, anything is. Well, right? it was that umbrella, day. Yeah. coffee yeah. cup, yeah. Yeah. umbrella, yeah, excellent. Yeah. Your groceries. Yeah. 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 Well, I can tell. I can tell you. You know, I, I too probably wasn't that cognitive of what wasn't fast down in my vehicle. But ever since that conversation, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't keep yeah. anything out. Yeah. No. It's all. Uh, it's all about education. Yeah. And 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 all the history all the facts that we find out during all the collision investigations and why yeah. things have happened to people, then you pass that on. Yeah. And if you don't pass it on, then what lessons are learned? That's right, that's right. And, you know, okay, so we refer to the coffee cup incident. There's, there's many outcomes of an accident. Okay, so accident, collision. There's, there's very many outcomes of a collision. It's not necessarily just that act of going fast, stopping, and there, there's so much more potentially to it. Oh, when you look at the recon side, yes, there's, it, it, it develops into a whole bunch of things. Your, your maintenance on your car, your, your tires that you might have, mm -hmm. um, your ability to operate the car, young or old. Yeah. There's two, two extremes there. Yeah. And we talk about that with senior centers, yeah. and then we, we, we talk about that with seven and eight year olds. Staying focused, right? Yes, focused. Gentlemen, folks, we're just gonna take a, a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. As we as we continue the conversation about road safety now, so that clip alone spoke volumes. Yes. Um, yeah, it does. And yeah. this is something that we were kind of bantering with ahead of the show is just how prevalent texting and driving is. No. Yeah, it's every huge. Day. Yeah, it's huge. We all see it yeah. every day, yeah. going to and from work. Yeah. And and you know, while well, we see it, I mean, this is obviously this is a, re, a, re, a recreation, but. The results can be absolutely catastrophic. Well, catastrophic for absolutely everybody, yes. whether you're a motorist, a passenger, mm -hmm. or a pedestrian. And yes. there are so many pedestrians being struck today than at any other time yeah. since they've been keeping records. That's been that's been big news in the GTA. Oh, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, York Region, Toronto, like that's yeah. been big news about. Um, well, it's a perfect storm. You get you get um, you get pedestrians that are walking down the street on their cell phone, doing things yeah. on their cell phone. And then you've got people driving in motor vehicles that are doing things on their cell phone or they're shaving or they're mm -hmm. having cereal or yeah. whatever they're doing because you know only I get to work and everyone's in a hurry to That's where right. they're going. And so nobody's paying yeah. attention. I, mean, I, I always pick on the term texting and driving, but the, yeah. the, the reality is it's, it's, it's distracted just driving. distractions, yeah. But um, texting is a huge part of it. Yeah, yeah. And, but there, but you're right. There is there is many other forms yeah. of distracted right. driving, right? I mean, you know, we, we had we had an opportunity um, through a, a partnership with York Regional Police and, a, and an outfit called Party, which is um, hosted by uh, South Lake Hospital in right. yep. in Newmarket, and they did a recreation of a mock collision. And uh, in in this case, it was somebody that was he decided to smoke a joint because. Mm -hmm. It relaxes you, mm -hmm. right? This is uh, one of the most ridiculous things I've ever yeah. heard. But um, and what our follow up to that is going to be, and I'm just following on your words, um, is when you said how many different people it, it affects. 
is we're actually going to do a follow-up show to to highlight who all gets affected. Like in the, in that in that mock-up, we had uh, you know a couple of people lost their life, some right. other people got seriously injured, but there was a wealth of people there dealing with the scene of the accident. There's you know you've got hospitals, you've got physiotherapists, you've got you know, so many other. Family Adults. members. And Absolutely. And, 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 you know, look well beyond that. You look at the time loss for everybody around that area that, especially if you just use the 401 corridor, something mm -hmm. happens on the 401. Look at all the time that people have lost Absolutely. because someone's made, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, a, a mm -hmm. phone call or mm -hmm. wanted to send a text or something and created that collision. Mm -hmm. And now you have people stopped on the 401 for maybe hours. Mm -hmm. And the gridlock is unbelievable. So look at all the all the time that people lose. Even even if you're just in town, sure. and you're behind somebody at a red light, mm -hmm. and they want to send that last quick message because they think it's mm -hmm. okay because they're stopped and they're not interfering with anything. The light turns green, mm -hmm. and they're still pushing the send button. And yes. you know they are because you're you can see them. Because there's a pause. They're, yeah. they're 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 the crotch watchers, right? Yes. They're always got that's your face do. down and down to, towards your legs. Yeah. And. That that's five seconds that you've lost again, mm -hmm. and then you know it just builds. it compounds it. Yeah, and if you right. think over the day, you probably lose a couple of minutes of your time because of people like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know? Now I, I just want to bring it back to um, during the break. We had a, we had a little little fact up there saying that you've educated over eight hundred thousand people. Yeah. yeah. Like that's that's I didn't know yeah. that I didn't know that number until this morning and I've known yeah. you guys for for three or four years. Well, we've been going on a long time. We've been going since 1993 when we started going to mm -hmm. one school, mm -hmm. which um, we don't even need to talk yeah. about that presentation yeah. at all because that was, <laughs> yeah. not okay. one of our better ones. So let's, eh? let's just say the first presentation <laughs> might not have been the, the easiest. It was to, a beginner, to do. pretty sure. raw. Yeah, sure. it was really yeah. sure. And then we just went on and we expanded out and people were calling us from different areas and different mm -hmm. areas and. And we expanded out until you know um, we had partnerships. And mm -hmm. We've never, from day one, mm -hmm. we decided from day one we'll never charge to go to a high school because how do you how do you go into a high school and talk about kids being killed, parents being killed, mm -hmm. and that see that'll be five hundred dollars, that'll be eight hundred, whatever it is, and that you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so we decided at the beginning that we're going to high schools, we go in and we do the thing and nobody has to pay anything. Wow. And, and, and well, I, wasn't, out, I wasn't aware of that. Well, yeah, well, we go out and we got great partners that, mm -hmm. um, that are mm -hmm. coming in on it that, that cover what our costs are mm -hmm. to go to the high schools sure. and to do it. And so um, as it progressed and we got farther along, we're, we're up in Blind River, Elliott Lake and uh, places like that. Well. And, uh, uh, places that don't get mm -hmm. that many people coming out to talk about these things. And then we've been down to Quebec. Um, uh, we've uh, we've actually had our, our program translated into French because they oh, like well. it down there Great. that much. Great. And we've actually we've been down to uh, Nova Scotia and we did our shows really? in Nova Scotia. In Nova Scotia, they just ate it up and they just thought it was really great. So yeah, so it's been. Uh, well, we've done a lot. So for eight hundred thousand students, I you know that's probably a minimum of, of it. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that, that's that's a wow. That's that's a huge. And we have people. people coming back to us later on when they're out of school, and they told yeah. us uh, you know about the seatbelt segment, and from that you know that they'll always wear their seatbelts and mm -hmm. uh, and this and that, and it makes you feel really good that you know you got through to one person or you got through to two people because that's all John and I ever play to is we always play to the one you know and sure and, uh, you know sure if, if well in. In your in that opening video, um, you spoke to it right there, where you said, you know, if, if we can change one life, yeah, you're right, yeah, that's right, yeah. that is yeah. Um, yeah, one decision. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean yeah. that's that's huge, right? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I still I have a hard time getting over the eight hundred thousand, but that's that, that, <laughs> that's really cool. Um, Some nights well, we, we do too. <laughs> yeah, well, we, have, we have a good captive audience, right? Yeah. We work with all the school boards, yeah, and mm -hmm. we, which we, which I'll add to. Are very receptive to this. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we we've yes. met with their, their superintendents and their trustees, and yeah. we've mm -hmm. got our, our program you know secured mm -hmm. um, with insurance and and mm -hmm. just a reputation behind it. Yeah. And we we have all you know pretty much all the police services York Region Police uses yeah. regularly. OPP, absolutely. Peel Region, Toronto, mm -hmm. Durham. We'll go anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. We've never said no to a school. Wow. We never charge for the school. 
and wow. it's it's all about reaching out and, and giving the the latest facts mm -hmm. you know there's some legislation changes coming up again for impaired driving December 18th in okay. the new year for distracted driving some 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 other changes to be made to clarify the the loopholes or mm -hmm. whatever people think that they they exist there with uh, especially the, the people that think they can use their cell phone while they're stopped at a light because right. they're not moving They feel anymore. it because they're not moving. It's, right. Well, it's, that's it. That's incorrect, yeah. but the loophole is going to be filled, right? So right. that you, uh, if you do have a handheld device in your car, it needs to be mounted to the car right. in, the, in the new legislation as opposed to a free-floating phone. Right? Oh, okay. So that okay. you can't have it in your hands so both hands are available to the steering wheel. You can still push the, the talk button on mm -hmm. your phone, just like your radio, you can yeah. turn the station. Yeah, you're allowed to you operate know. controls. Yeah, you turn the heat up or down. The, yeah. Your phone's to be mounted and it's to answer the call, right? Wow. You, you're not gonna be typing like this. Yes. You know, that's, yeah. that's the, the, the hard part is that I, I guess that's what our thumbs are for. <laughs> well, well, they are now. <laughs> they are now. Yeah, yeah. Go figure. Right? That, that, that's what it's become, right? Yeah, it's, right. Yeah. Um, and, and me too. Like even even coming into the, into the studio, I, I drove you know a handful of people that were. Yeah. yeah. And you know we it's not just uh, high school students. You know we uh, we go to a lot of senior centers and we have programs for oh, them as well. Okay. We have a. We have a pedestrian program, which we, we also, we do a pedestrian program for high schools called mm -hmm. the Pedestrian Impact. And we have the same thing for senior centers, but we change it up a little bit for them. And uh, because it's a lot of seniors that are getting, that are getting struck as pedestrians. Yes. And, uh, and also the ones that still drive, mm -hmm. um, they gotta be kept up on the Highway Traffic Act. Absolutely. And, and as John was saying, there's a whole bunch of new laws coming in. And mm -hmm. uh, like we're already talking about the new laws starting in January and in December. And mm -hmm. we've already been talking about it for about a week. Yeah. And maybe a little more than that, eh, I guess. Maybe, right. maybe around a week or a little before that. Right. And um, so that everybody's you know, gonna be right on board with it and everyone's gonna understand what it's all about. So mm -hmm. and the seniors, if they wanna keep driving, you know, you, they gotta understand they what gotta the laws are. They gotta brush up on their skills. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. keep up with it. Yeah. The, skills the, and information, right? Like the little things, HOV lanes. What do they mean for a person that yeah. never uses a 403? Yeah. Right? What, what, what's an HOV? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Can I drive in it? Can I not? Yeah. Little, yeah. little things, but yeah. that affects yeah. the whole driving pattern on that highway. Yeah, of course it does. Right. Yeah. Of course it does. And it's the same thing like with our seniors. We operate the same way as we do with the high schools. No charge for anything. In there. Wow. The Insurance Bureau is, is with us on that. The Insurance Bureau of Canada, they, um, mm -hmm. they, uh, um, they're in partnership for that program exclusively. And right. They, uh, and they've really been behind it for several years. Yeah. Because, you know, you got to look after the seniors too. Yeah, absolutely. The gray hair. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Now, so okay, so you've talked about you. You engage obviously a lot of youth. You engage um, seniors, um, but you you've also um, been given opportunity to bring this into other places of business. Yeah, we uh, we go out to companies. Um, we just finished uh, working with Enbridge Pipelines. We've done mm -hmm. all their facilities in Ontario and mm -hmm. and in Quebec. And the one in mm -hmm. Quebec, we did it in French. And uh, they were concerned about um, about distracted driving and, and safety and that. So we uh, we devised a program that would um, accomplish what what they wanted to accomplish. Well, mm -hmm. it still covered you know our core subjects, mm -hmm. and uh, and we went into all their facilities and and we talked to uh, we talked to all their employees about that. We've done all of Dupont all across. Yeah, we did all of Dupont all across um, mm -hmm. Ontario, and uh, and then mm -hmm. we did by a. A computer hookup all across Canada mm -hmm. um, with all their facilities and um, uh, well yeah so we, it was, we you know it's like branding right yeah you know that's you, exactly what it is you, 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 are you gonna drive in a, in a way that makes um, Rogers look bad if Rogers mm -hmm. is on the side of your car yeah right, you're absolutely you know, right. same with Enbridge and, and mm -hmm. same with your personal car you shouldn't drive mm -hmm. it like like no one's gonna know who you are you yeah. have a license plate on the car and yeah you know, things go wrong and lots of programs out there like Roadwatch, mm -hmm. you know, people yes. complain about that. You get a letter sent home yeah. and, and if you're a young person or, or someone who doesn't own the car, the owner's gonna find out that this car was driven in a way that yes. concerns somebody yeah. and they, they felt it necessary to call, Sure. right? And 911, we get calls all the time. You know, impaired driving, distracted driving, Absolutely. kind of a 50-50 deal. Mm -hmm. um, people eating food and driving mm -hmm. incorrectly in the lane, you know, so lots of social stuff out there that that really help us in the policing side, right? Yes. With, 
getting the information about the bad drivers on the road, whether it's through Road Watch, yeah. whether it's through 911. Sure. You know? Yeah, no. And, you know, it's, it, we, I think we've all said it at some point just throughout this segment, is um, it's about people making the right choices. Oh, it is, yeah. Well, right? and, and, you know, um, just go back to the seatbelts for a second. Uh, you know, like, whenever we're talking to people, like I say, it's high school students, we always ask them how many people don't wear your seatbelt when yeah. you're in the front or back seat. So the back seats, they think they're all okay on that. So That's what, right. What, what, what but you do? Yeah, what we do is once, once we find out how many I people... i got to cut you off on that note. Okay. And we could go on Excellent. for a couple we of could, hours. We could, yes. But okay. thanks so much for being here, gentlemen. No Thank problem. You. Folks, that wraps up this episode of Policing York Region. It's been great having you. Look forward to seeing you again.